Africa has been a region of focus for Beijing's quest for greater global influence with billions of dollars being pumped into infrastructure projects in the continent. Some critics have questioned China's motives, however, accusing it of seeking to secure key raw materials such as oil and minerals. In March, then U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson warned African countries that they should be careful not to forfeit their sovereignty when they accept loans from China. China has repeatedly rejected accusations that it is only interested in Africa for its mineral resources and it has no strings attached on the aid programs which are widely welcomed. The Namibian president who's, uh, who was visiting China a few days ago said that the China-Africa cooperation is on equal footing and the China's investment in his country is not just digging for resources. Now in two weeks, three African presidents have visited China. The presidents of Cameroon, Namibia and Zimbabwe. Ties between China and Africa are improving rapidly now what do you think about the china africa cooperation that is our talking point today the ties are improving rapidly what do you think about this Africa and fellow viewers from all over the world and thanks for joining me in the studio today it's views on the continent on Africa media TV today we are talking about ties between Africa and China everyone knows that this uh, relationship or the cooperation that both our continents or this continent and the country shares is something that has been improving rapidly in the recent years and just to inform you that sometime to come this year African leaders and the Chinese leader will be meeting for a conference or a summit is the first time this is happening in 12 years. Now today we talk about this cooperation which is improving rapidly and um, why is it so? Three African presidents have visited China just in three, in uh, two weeks, in less than two weeks. We have the president of Cameroon, the president of Zimbabwe, and lastly, um, the president of Namibia, who was the second, I beg your pardon, but then he said something very important. And now the president of Namibia, he said that this cooperation is something which is going to be a win-win cooperation and not a win-loss or a gain-loss. I would like us to listen to his interview he was speaking to CTGN while he visited China and in Beijing. Take a listen and I'll join you right after that. Elevation to that stage only means that we have been all weather friends. We have been cooperating before independence of Namibia. China supporting us when things were bad and then after independence we continued at another level and now we are moving up now it's a era of second phase of the struggle for us where people now have peace and stability but they are anxious to get now benefits of that freedom they want to prosper they want to have shelter housing shelter uh, infrastructure schools clinics and so on and they are eager they are in a hurry. So China being the all-weather friend who was there when we were still struggling, when we are now in the second phase of the struggle, that of economic emancipation, those who are with us must also come and join us. But this time we are talking about creating win-win situation. Now elevation of the status is a great honor for us. We are very proud of it. We are very appreciative of that. But it has a, another extension of the focus. It's basically for Africa, we bring in focus uh, the, the desires we had, what we want to get through focus, and again, industrialization. I mean, it's a question of now 
creating now industries, adding value to our, our whether it's the road or whatever you call it, it's still for us to create jobs for our young people who are roaming the streets. That's a time bomb. If we don't solve that problem by creating industries, by creating jobs, we have a problem education, education, technology, innovation. These are the things of future generations. Africa is to leapfrog. We have to catch up and we will be left behind. Technology, innovation, that is the thing of the future. So by linking ourselves with the Belt and Road, we are going to benefit, but also get something out of that. Train our people, build industries, therefore create jobs, transfer technology, so we get win-win situation again. That's the Namibian president saying it is a win-win situation now. That is what he thinks. I would just like to inform you about the program today. You can as well tell us what you think about this talking point. We are having a very interactive program on air right now. Views on the continent. Call us using any of the numbers on the screen to tell us what you think about today's talking point. What do you think about this uh, cooperation between China and Africa? Unlike the West, we're talking about European countries and then the United States of America. You can as well leave us a message on our Facebook page, Views on the Continent of African Media TV, or you put a comment under the post we just put up there before the program. You can tell us what you think. We'll read your lovely comments and your messages during the course of the program. And I'm sure you listened to the president of uh, Namibia, of course, he said um, China has been an all-weather friend and China helped them in an economic emancipation. So he doesn't believe that uh, China is trying to gain more from the African continent than putting in. What are your own thoughts? I would like us to listen to our first participant of the day. Hello to you and thanks for joining us on the program. Hello and thanks for joining us. I'm afraid it's like we have um, some difficulty getting to that um, participant, but then I would just like to expand shit more on what the president of Namibia said. In his report, he said currently um, when he was in a visit, on a state visit in China, he said that comments smearing bilateral cooperation between China and, and, and Namibia are doomed to fail because so many people were saying that um, African leaders should be afraid of China. They should be trading with China with a very long spoon because they do not know what China's intentions are. But then the Namibian president said that there is no need for anyone to fear and if people want this relationship between both uh, countries to fail, they are just wasting their time. Now, let's welcome this participant. Hello to you and thanks for joining us. Regina. Good afternoon, viewers of Africa Yeah, I'm very grateful to be part of today's topic. Let me start by quoting in the Bible. Wisdom is the principal thing. In getting wisdom, get understanding. What does it mean? You have to know how to apply wisdom, which is the understanding of wisdom. China has new colonialism. Apply wisdom because they know what they are targeting in Africa. For this cause, they establish the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation so that they can strengthen the relationship of Africa and China in October 2000. 
after this, you will notice between 2000 and 2014, Chinese bank contractor and the government own more than $86 billion to Africa. I want to tell you that Chinese investment in Africa has helped the economic growth of Africa. One thing I want you to know also is that one of their factor of coming to having a relationship with Africans, continents, is for them to transform the, the Africa of 20th century, which was full of AIDS, civil war, poverty, and other problems. They now use a way of making their commodities to be shipped in all African continent. And you will notice that commodity prices have climbed up with the expansion of Chinese economy in African continent. And this has boosted GDP in African country since the creation of the forum in year 2000. China's F African country in this China African cooperation. Thank you very much, Regina. Thank you very much as well. Thank you so much for always um, participating in the program. That's Mr. Tayu joining us from Douala in Cameroon. Now, according to him, China has been very helpful in this cooperation. But then in March, uh, the then U.S. Secretary Rex Tillerson, while he was visiting Africa, he warned African countries that they should be careful not to forfeit their sovereignty when they accept loans from China. Mr. Tayu mentioned the amount of money that China has been giving to African countries. And uh, at most of times, money that has been... Um, given to African countries or poured into African countries, some of them could be loans, but then after that, such debts are cancelled and we are looking at a country, uh, Cameroon. Recently, or a few days ago, the president of Cameroon visited China and uh, China cancelled the country's debt. And then another loan was given, but then the president signed five different um, uh, MOUs with the Chinese president and they vowed that they were going to work better than ever. I would like us to listen to this other report on uh, Cameroon and China as concerns uh, this uh, China-African cooperation. Take a listen to this video. It's the first visit by an African leader to China this year and the first state visit to Beijing since the conclusion of the two sessions annual political season. Chinese President Xi Jinping met with his Cameroonian counterpart Paul Bia at the Great Hall of the People. President Xi said China is willing to deepen cooperation based on mutual benefit. China and Cameroon should continue to deepen high-level exchanges, including various aspects of exchanges, and continue to support each other's core values and interests. This includes expanding trade areas and collaboration in key areas. Cameroon's leader echoed President Xi's remarks. He wished President Xi full success in his new term. The Cameroonian also expressed willingness to work with President Xi to strengthen existing ties and welcome future cooperative relations between the two countries. I hope that the relationship continues to flourish as part of a true partnership based on the principles of solidarity and mutual respect, which has stood the test of time. China's contribution has been decisive in carrying out many important projects for the economic and social development of my country. And the list of all these projects is very long. Since China and Cameroon established diplomatic ties in 1971, bilateral cooperation has grown steadily in various fields. This counts as be a sixth visit 
to China. The two presidents agreed to understand and promote political mutual trust and continue to support issues concerning each other's core interests and concerns. Both leaders also witnessed the signing of various cooperative documents covering areas such as business cooperation, infrastructure, and human resources development. And I'm going to tell you more about uh, President Paul B. Alf Cameron's visit to China and the neutral um, agreements that he signed with the Chinese President Xi Jinping. But then we have another participant on the phone. Hello to you and thanks for joining us. Good morning, um, Africa Media. Good morning, Gina. Good morning to all the televiewers of Africa. I want to say that China is growing economic world power today. So China has not been doing bad in uh, in their cooperation with Africa, but we should know very well that China is not investing his money where he, he has or she has not seen good resources. African got all the resources they want. So they are investing because they want to they want to they want to extract those important resources which they are seeing. And just just like the european did in colonial days so i would like to say it's not a bad relationship but to me to my own opinion if african leaders were wise enough they should have made these resources very important for african and africans alone because we got it all. We got it all. Take the case when China brings in a company in Cameroon, in Cameroon or any other African country, who do they employ? They employ their own workers. They employ Chinese because they don't want Africans to know their techniques of work. So to me, it is not even good to even cooperate with them. But they will pretend as if they are doing good for Africans, but they are killing us slowly. And surely we are dying because their resources will finish someday. Because we are not getting anything from all those countries that are coming in Africa and taking out our resources for, for just loans. And they take in more, much more interest from these loans. So that's all I have to say. Good day. Thank you very much. Of course, uh, I'm sure you listened to that last caller. And to him, Africa has more. And uh, probably to him, our leaders are minimizing what we have, that we go to the extent of taking loans to come to help our own country. We need to concentrate on what we have that's what he thinks what about you watching us back there at home it views on the continent on africa media tv you can call us using any of these numbers on the screen to tell us what you think about the or probably a rebirth of uh, the cooperation between african countries and china in less than two weeks three african leaders have visited the republic of china and the first this year was President Pobi of Cameroon, then came the President of Namibia, and then uh, recently and presently, the President of Zimbabwe, His Excellency uh, Namgangwa, Emerson Namgangwa, is in China, and both leaders have um, promised to step up when it comes to cooperation. And now let's talk a little bit about the Cameroon government and what happened in China. The Cameroon government um, sources said that uh, agreements were signed on um, July 2011, on the first day, uh, July, to, uh, I beg your pardon, in July 2011, they signed agreements, but then President Paul Bia still went ahead to 
him and the president of China, they went ahead to remind themselves of this agreement. And um, he visited so many sites while he was in um, China. And he saw what the Chinese people could do for him as um, several local reporters, local televisions reported, as well as the Chinese uh, television ctgn reported in a story that we are going to be seeing later the president was there with an entourage who do about 70 of them visiting that country and on this occasion him and the chinese president signed five mutual um, agreements on uh, relationships of further corporations between cameroon and china and then after that, when the president of Cameroon came back, the president of Zimbabwe was uh, next to visit. But then before his visit was the president of Namibia, whose video we have already watched. And he is um, coming in to clarify what uh, the president of uh, China, Xi Jinping, said a few weeks back. When so many people had spoken about the relationship China has with Africa, he came in to say that it had nothing to gain. It was not a recolonization or it was not a colonization. He said China was just um, having a mutual relationship with Africa, meaning both countries or uh, the country and uh, any all African country that is coming to cooperate with it is going to be on the basis of 50-50, win-win uh, or a gain-gain and not a win-loss. And the Namibian president just uh, clarified or reassured his uh, citizens while he visited the country a few days ago. I'd like us to get into another video which uh, is talking about still the Cameroonian president, Paul Bia, while he was visiting China. He visited a factory there. I would like us to listen to that video and then I'll join us or you after that. A visit aiming to boost green development ties between China and Cameroon. Bia's visit included a tour of the International Bamboo and Red Tan Organization's showroom, where he looked at handicrafts, furniture, and even drainage pipes made from plant fiber. The president expressed his interest in the large number of products that can be made with bamboo and rattan, including charcoal. Bamboo and rattan are very significant for sustainable development in Africa and across the world. The International Bamboo and Red Town Organization, or IMBA, is the first intergovernmental organization to be based in China. The organization encourages the use of bamboo and red tan for sustainable development, including poverty alleviation, climate change mitigation, and land restoration. The organization's director general welcomed the president's visit. Having the president of Cameroon visiting us during his state visit to China gave a real boost to our work in Africa mm -hmm. and to linking what we do in China mm -hmm. with what we are doing in Africa. The International Bamboo and Red Town Organization was founded in 1997. It is the first intergovernmental organization established in China. Among its 43 membering countries, 18 of them are from Africa. China's bamboo industry is worth 30 billion U.S. dollars and employs almost 10 million people. So there's a lot of experience to be shared and plenty of opportunity for South-South cooperation between China and Cameroon. This is not the first time a head of state has shown interest in bamboo. In November 2017, Chinese President Xi Jinping congratulated IMBA on its positive role and affirmed that China will continue to support IMBA's endeavors. IMBA's co-chair Jiang Zihui says the organization will honor its commitment to implement the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. During the past 20 years, the International Bamboo and Rattan Organization has played a positive role in promoting poverty alleviation in producing areas, boosting trade in bamboo and rattan products, and facilitating sustainable development. At the end of the tour, President Bia presented a signed statement congratulating IMBA on its work. He said Cameroon looks forward to working more closely with IMBA to develop the bamboo and red tan industry and inspire sustainable development across Central Africa.
Now, just like other presidents who have been visiting uh, China, both countries signed a memorandum of uh, understanding. And um, in Cameroon's case with China, they sharpened five of these agreements. Remember, I said that uh, they had some similar agreements in 2011. The first was an economic and technical cooperation agreement, and then a protocol agreement to reinforce uh, cooperation or infrastructural development between the two countries. Um, a memorandum of understanding on the development of human resources, a capacity building framework agreement on production between the National Development and Reform Commission between both countries, a concessional loan agreement between the Exim Bank of China and Cameroon to cover phase of uh, the two portable water supply projects in nine towns in Cameroon. China supplies water actually in Cameroon. Fellow viewers, what do you think about all of these, so we're talking about Namibia, Zimbabwe, and Cameroon today. In less than two weeks, these three presidents have visited China in a bid to boost up cooperation between their countries and China. What do you think about this cooperation? I'd like us to receive another participant. Hello to you, and thanks for joining us on the program. All those uh, watching the program at this moment, Gina. These Chinese have taught us that it is not just, you don't just welcome uh, somebody in your house and conclude that this guy is a good person. We thought they, uh, they are coming in Africa was to help alleviate poverty, thereby providing some of those products that the low income earners uh, couldn't afford. But in recent times, they, with the cooperation of our Afri African leaders, have, have, have been helping us by, by helping in killing us, keeping our economy, draining our resources for not good, no, no, no good reason. Because these guys, what they do, the loan they give you, they make sure that they give you high level of loan and uh, that you won't be able uh, to, to, to meet up at uh, maybe at the, the, when you are to reimburse or redeem uh, the loan so they will give you a huge sum of money just to keep you in debt and continue to cripple your resources one good thing that these guys, if they were genuine with our African leaders, they should rather uh, like sponsor, they should give us scholarship. They can open scholarship programs for, for African youths to go in China and uh, be, be trained with the various techniques, the ver various production techniques and whatever they will want to, to, to establish in Africa and do. For them to come back in Africa and develop their countries on their own. Because I believe we Africans, we are very, very open-minded. We are very, very talented and we are very, very uh, fast in learning. So going to these people and uh, learning their techniques in doing all this and uh, coming back to our African, our various African countries and develop and also training also those that are in the field already. That will be the best way to help in any cooperation. But cooperation with loans, not only little amount of but huge sum of money that doesn't even help the lame, the, the lame man, those in the street, that the loan taken will not help them in any way. Those in the suburb of villages, the interior part of the country, they don't get anything from this loan. It is only circulating within the ranks of the government. And these Chinese, they keep on draining our resources without even 
helping us in any way uh, because even the account uh, the, the, the company established in some african countries you see for example in cameroon uh, when these people they employ you as a cameroonian they pay you let's say the, some some of their company pay 700 francs a day just imagine 700 francs a day what the hell can you do with uh, 700 francs are these people helping us to 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 kill our manpower or they are helping us in the developing our country by killing our able men and women i think the these uh, leaders both them and the african uh, uh, african president and the chinese presidents or the chinese government they should rather sponsor scholarship programs that will help train africans to do their job with this i want to like fall in line with same word uh, with the then president uh, the then secretary of uh, state of the u.s though these countries they are all the same but the chinese in recent times have been exaggerating their cooperation or their moves in africa thank you thank you very much that's uh, terence soyang and he's focusing on the effects of uh a cooperation between Africa and uh, China. Now let's move to Zimbabwe. China, Zimbabwe have agreed to establish comprehensive strategic partnership of uh, cooperation. And uh, the president of Zimbabwe, Emerson Nangangwa, is presently in China, where he is uh, visiting China officially uh, for the first time as the president of Zimbabwe. Before we get into Zimbabwe, I'd like us to receive another participant. Hello to you and thanks for joining us. To all of you of Africa, media, good afternoon to the lovers of this program. Gina, uh, if you ask me personally, I think uh, the China-African relationship so far is a good one. Yeah, it's, uh, it looks like a win-win situation, it's a positive one. And uh, I'm talking with regards to an average African, the impact on an average African, taking, for example, the their cooperation in Cameroon and uh, with the respect to the gypsy, the creepy gypsy port, which, of course, is one of their largest projects so far uh, in Africa. And uh, considering also the uh, Malaria Research Center in Yaoundé, among others, I think that it goes a long way to impact an average Cameroonian positively. Though, Gina, concerning the gypsy port, so many displaced people were, were angry because of the way they were treated, and that is on the part of the Cameroon government because of too much embezzlement and corruption of the money that was meant to settle them. So that one, we can't blame them. We can't blame the Chinese people. So, you know, I would say that generally, on a general note, I think with China concerning trade and uh, infrastructural development, so far I, I, I encourage their activities. But I will also note that when it comes to politics and security, I would like that they stay off, yes, because those are sensitive and key areas of the country. And when they come in in such areas, they only fight to protect their businesses and interests, and they don't fight for the common man in the street, which of course is very bad. So as long as they stay along the trade and infrastructure development route, yeah, to maintain on business is okay by me, but when they start getting involved into politics and maybe security issues here and there, that is when I would say it's very bad because that should be the, an internal issue of the country. They should concentrate on their international or bilateral trade with the country. That one has no problem. Yeah. And so far, comparing them with the Western powers, Gina, I would say they are doing a lot. Yeah, they are doing a lot of positive work in Africa so far. Though some people complained of their goods and so on and so on. That now is on the part of the government. 
if you sign an agreement with somebody and the person is bringing in cheaper goods than what you sign you should be able to rectify that so i think our governments are the ones who allows all those maybe cheap and expired or goods that will not last for long in the countries so we shouldn't blame them they are out for business so for that i think china is welcome in africa as long as they stay off politics and security issues thank you thank you very much uh, that's akumba dirani and uh, to him china has been doing a lot but um they should not get involved in politics. Another thing he says is the government, the different African countries should step up when it concerns management. If they um, have uh, cooperation with these other countries, of course, it should be for the good of their people. People should not, shouldn't, uh, or shouldn't siphon funds and put them in their pockets. And that's why we have the Operation Sparrowhawk today, picking up some of those people who have been stealing or allegedly stealing from the government. And we were on the, um, the Chinese President Xi Jinping and his Zimbabwean counterpart, Emerson Nangangwa. They met on Tuesday and agreed to establish a comprehensive strategic partnership of cooperation between their two countries. The two head of states um, uh, reached the agreement during their talks of the Great Hall, at the Great Hall, I beg your pardon, of the people in Beijing. Mr. Z said that the Zimbabwean people have started a new journey in building their country since Nangangwa took over from office last November. Before um, Mr. Nangangwa left his country, Zimbabwe, with an uh, 80 man delegation to China, I'd like you to uh, have uh, or to see what was happening in Harare between him and a Chinese delegation present as well in Zimbabwe before he left. Take a listen. President Nangangwa's first state visit to China after assuming office in last November and also his first state visit to a country outside Africa. President Ngangwa aims to be able to attract investment from China during his visit and more to seek technical expertise and modern technology from China. And during a press conference on Friday, the spokesperson for China's foreign ministry said that China and Zimbabwe are longtime friends and the two sides have maintained frequent high-level contacts as well as successful cooperations including those for international and regional affairs and on that note the Belt and Road is very likely to be brought up. Before President Nangagwa, the President of Cameroon and the President of Namibia also paid their visit to China during the last two weeks in March a total of three visits paid by African countries' leaders within a half-month period since the two sessions concluded, while all aim to enhance bilateral ties to improve the overall relationship between China and Africa as a whole has also been on the top of the agenda. The Belt and Road and the presidency's thoughts of a community of shared future have been hugely welcomed by many African countries. China is now uh, one of Africa's most important and influential partners in development and trade. And China has registered a clean history in Africa, a zero colonial past in the continent. Since the establishment of the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation in 2000, ties between China and Africa has been growing rapidly. Trade volume grew almost 10 times, and investments from China into Africa have helped local poverty alleviation efforts. And in September this year, the summit for the Forum will take place in Beijing. Back to you. Now in September this year, uh, African leaders will meet with China. That's the Chinese leader to discuss about ways to further boost this cooperation that has been growing rapidly between both countries. If you're just joining us, it's Views on the Continent on African Media TV. You can join us using the number on the screen to participate on today's program. You could as well leave us a message on our Facebook page, Views on the Continent of African Media TV. Your messages or your comments on the post on the page is uh, going to be right during the program. I'd like us to receive another participant. Hello to you and thanks for joining us. Uh, good afternoon, all members of Free Media and viewers of Free Media. Good afternoon, Africa. In 
a situation like this, when you have the countries like America talking about Africa should forget about China, and it's, it's, it's very funny because when Americans were happy in Africa with the law and the US, nobody said a word. You just need to understand that it's time for China to do what it, it has to do best. And besides, they're doing it in the best and even a better way than the Americans. Yeah, we still just need to understand that the Chinese are here for good. On the other hand, the Chinese are not actually doing the best thing, but at least they're doing something good for the Africans as well. We also need to understand that no matter what they do, the developments and everything, no matter the restrictions and other documents that have been signed in accordance with their aid and everything, but at least they do it and we see what they are doing. Take for example in Cameroon, without the Chinese, we don't have had good skills here. Without the Chinese, we don't have had good goods. They would have been paid, but at least they are doing it and they are doing it well. Yeah, so the Chinese, I prefer the Chinese far better than the Americans. Thank you. Thank you very much for your contribution. Let's receive another caller. Hello to you and thanks for joining us. Good afternoon, Gina. Good afternoon, lovers of a great channel, African Media. Gina, it is high time for the European nations to start to be respecting China. Because what uh, China is doing in Africa, there is no country in the world, be it you are US, be it you are, you are France or whatsoever, you can never do what China alone is doing in Africa. Because firstly, China is there in Africa, it has improved, it is helping African countries to improve both economically and whatsoever. They have helped Africans even to reduce the unemployment rate they are there employing people, they are there doing many things in Africa. I do not know why U.S. is that way against what France is doing in Africa. Because I have learned so many things, so many things that the U.N. now they are saying against what China is doing. I bet you, Gina, all those things like this, they are saying like that. I'm not sure if they put U.S. to in the place of China, they can never do what China is doing. They can never be better than China, even though no people, nobody can. Even though China is is benefiting from Africa, it is in the same way Africa also they are they are they are they are, they are, they are benefiting from China. It is something like a 50-50 way a, 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 a scale weight. So there is nothing that other countries should uh, um, should, uh, should be talking of. China is doing this. China is doing that. It is high time for them to be respecting what what China is doing. China has done a lot. China has done. These are these are the type of people we want them to increase their, their cooperation in Africa. Not only to be saying things that you are, that you can you cannot prove it. Thank you, Gina. Thank you very much, Nkwe Marcel. Thanks for your contribution. Of course, according to him, China has done a lot for Africa. Let's receive another participant. Hello to you and thanks for joining us. Good afternoon, Gina. Good afternoon, televiewers of Africa Media. Well, our topic today, which uh, focuses on China, I think it has a, a lot of uh, uh, debate here to, to, to like, uh, focus on. First of all, one never does, like, can deny the fact that China doesn't, like, try its own, in its own way to help African countries. We don't deny that. We have seen that also. They have come in and uh, tried to heat up competition with other Western countries and other Asian countries. But to say that this uh, cooperation is on an equal, equal or gain gain relationship is a total failure, a fake, a fake, a fake, a fake idea. It is something wrong. First of all, let me just put it very clearly. The Chinese, they don't care about human rights. And they don't even care about environmental pollution or climate change. The Chinese, even if there are violations of human rights or um, the rights of man in whatever countries that they are focused on, they don't even care to speak out against that. What they are being focused on is actually the interest of their economic gain to be, to be chipped away from or taken to China. 
they have never in any way condemned killings. They have never in any way condemned human rights violation, the right of the girl child also. We have seen it in many countries, Cameroon too, Nigeria and other countries too, though they are a bit limited in Nigeria also. Even the construction, the road construction in the country, the Chinese they have the money, their main problem is not even the money, they pump in the money, then construct low quality road. There, is, there was once a, 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 a picture that floated the internet of an East African country where the Chinese had to construct a road, but immediately after three days, it fell down, destroying homes and killing some. That is what China is after. They are after the production of cheap goods to flood the African market with. Okay, so I, I do not even see anything that they would talk about the gain gain. They are there to explode the materials and take away to China. They even come in with their own food. They come in with their own food. They don't even like want to like adapt to the condition of the country. They bring in their own food. And the Chinese, they don't. They don't spend in the country. All payments, everything is being done in China. And I don't see any normal human being telling me that it is a gain gain relationship. The Chinese are out to exploit and bring down Africa and I can never in any way tell you anything that other countries or other African countries are getting. This fake uh, or, 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 or most of these dictators in Africa rushing to China are only going there to grab loans that they will keep embezzling. I think I will still come back to throw more light on it. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Lewis Benya, for joining us from Yaoundé, Cameroon. Thanks for your contribution. Let's receive another participant. Hello to you and thanks for joining us. Good afternoon, China. Thanks for letting me once more participate on the program. Uh, talking about China and Africa relationships, um, I think it's welcome. Um, because you find that um, the African countries have a, a, a great power, a larger bargaining power when it comes to, to dealing with, with China as compared to the other Western nations, for example, uh, the USA or France, where negotiations or bilateral relations are one-sided. Um, I would also like to say that it's, it's a welcome move, I think, African countries should definitely look for, for fair, fair um, trade and trans transactions among uh, other nations. But at the same time, I think we as Africans should learn to do things on our own. By that, by that I mean we should learn to like collaborate between each other. I believe we have African countries that have the know-how and have the expertise to like help in several domains and this can benefit uh, a couple of other uh, African countries. You know, the, basically it's all about sharing of technology where countries like South Africa or for example, uh, North African countries like Egypt or Morocco could um, help out um, the, the fellow African counter counterparts by providing uh, 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 development schemes, uh, exchange of ideas and technology, uh, you know, win-win basically for the African continent. We should learn to do trade, to uh, uh, sustain uh, our development within ourselves first as Africans before looking for outsiders to, to come and help us. Because the simple truth is um, China may be there uh, what the relationship they have with Africa is, is a positive one, but they, I think they also have their, their own um, hidden agendas as well. You know, like the saying goes, uh, charity begins at home. We as Africans should first of all seek help and get help from fellow African brothers, and then after probably get uh, look for, for help elsewhere. But it should be uh, there should be more cooperation ties among african countries thank you thank you very much lorenzo is joining us from germany thanks for your contribution fellow viewers 
We've come to the end of uh, today's program, and today we were talking about a uh, relationship between China and Africa. What do you think about this new cooperation? Do you think it is a win-win or a win-loss? What do you think about it? You can continue the conversation on our Facebook page, Views on the Continent of African Media TV. Remember, you can see this program again anytime on our YouTube page, um, Africa Media TV on YouTube. The program will be uploaded. I want to thank our technicians for being there with us, always in the studio till the end. Now, from wherever you're watching us, it's goodbye for now.